Good morning. Our first song is 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Seems like never before, oh my soul, worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day.
next song is He Lives. Page. Two fifty one.
Pathfinders present colors. Present Hermes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order Hermes. Post colors. Please join the Pathfinders as we recite the Pathfinder Pledge and the Pathfinder Law. Pathfinders, present Hearns. Pathfinder Pledge. By the grace of God, I will be pure and kind and true. I will keep the Pathfinder Law. I will be a servant of God and a friend to man. The Law, the Pathfinder Law, is for me to keep the morning watch, do my honest part, care for my body, Keep a level eye, be courteous and obedient, walk softly in the sanctuary, keep a song in my heart, and go on God's errand. Order? You may be seated. For the parents of the baby that's being dedicated, we didn't skip you, we moved you. <laughs> Welcome, happy Sabbath. Welcome to the Rapid City Seventh-day Adventist Church Pathfinder Sabbath. A little different than our usual Sabbath, but... It's another opportunity. In case you didn't get enough young people last week, we figured you just needed a little bit more. So welcome to our Pathfinder Sabbath. Uh, Deke has some announcements for us. Uh, for announcements, you can read the announcements in the bulletins. I uh, trust you can all read it. Uh, but a couple that aren't in there. Next Sabbath in the afternoon, the pastor is going to have a training session for elders. That includes elders who are currently serving and those elders who have served in the past. Um, join us at 2 o'clock and uh, we'll go through a training process. Also, another announcement is summer's coming, and that means uh, Flag Mountain Camp for the young people. In the past, we have the church has assisted in paying uh, part of the fee for children to attend. So if you want to help out in that effort, um, mark your Tice Bulletin and put it down for Flag Mountain Camp. With that, Jamie has an announcement. Good morning. Good morning. Um, for those of you who don't know, although most of you probably know me, I'm the school principal here. Um, and I just want to announce that we are going to have a preview day on May 5 uh, from 8 to 12. And it's for anyone uh, any kids who will be in grades K through 8 next year. Um, so I've asked a couple of the school kids to come and help me pass out some flyers. Um, so if you know of anyone who's interested or you just want to give it to a random person, you can do that. So the kids will pass out the flyers now. Again, we'd just like to welcome you and thank you all for coming to the Pathfinder Sabbath. And we will continue with our program by singing our opening song, which is the Pathfinder song. So will the congregation please stand.
Let's pray. Dear Jesus, please bless this service. Please help the Pathfinders to do well. And thank you for the Sabbath. Amen. Huh? <laughs> it's been a busy year <laughs> uh, with everything happening, uh, especially with our house burning down, which interrupted so many things. But by God's grace, we were able to get to Pathfinder Bible Experience two weeks after that. The kids did great. Uh, really, really good. Very, very proud of them. They all participated and studied hard. And that's the main thing. Our focus was on the book of John, which is uh, for Pathfinder Bible Experience, which is why you'll see uh, the vignettes or scenes from the life of Jesus from as from the book of John. Some of the scenes that you'll be seeing may be a little bit different than how you remember them, because you may be remembering them from a different gospel. Um, we're very proud of these kids. There's been a lot of changes through the year. Um, unfortunately, uh, other losses as well, which is one reason one of our Pathfinders isn't here uh, he just recently lost a grandfather, and so it's been it's been a challenging year. But we're very proud of these kids, and we hope you enjoy the service. Oh, and another thing for the offering appeal, yeah, I just bought our tickets for the camporee. So yay, we're going next summer, and for once we're not going to have to take a week to get there. It's two hours, so. <laughs> So we're very grateful for that. <laughs> somehow, somehow our conference moved Oshkosh to Wyoming. Yes. So Gillette is where we're going to be doing our big program. So it's going to be great. But we still would like to throw in Yellowstone for our kids because that's still, so we, we hope to take a little bit longer than the Camporee. Um, but the tickets are two twenty five dollars apiece. And, you know, then there's fuel and, and food and all that, that wonderful things. They do eat. <laughs> they do eat. I th that's one thing I found out with Pathfinders years ago. The longer you're away from home, the more they eat. I did, I did not know that. But, boy, by the time we get back from a trip, they're eating like horses. It's amazing. <laughs> so, um, so, yes. Uh, the, so the offering is for the local church budget. So all of the loose offering will go for that local church budget. But if you would like to assist the Pathfinders in this program, uh, in, in getting ready for the, the Gillette program, or just all the crafts and all the uniforms and all the things that we do, just mark on your tithe envelope Pathfinders and put some, put some funding in there and it will go into our account. And we greatly appreciate it. And it doesn't have to just be today. You can do it next week too. And, and while you're at it, you can put a little bit in for the building fund and a few of those other funds that need it. But, um, we appreciate your support. But by God's prayers. grace, oh, my word, God is prayers. continuing to, to grow the Rapid City Church and do mighty things here. And we We're know grateful. that he has a plan for us, and we thank him for that. Will the deacons please rise? Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the grace and mercy that you continue to bestow upon us each and every day. For the things that you do for us that we don't even know you've done that you just continue to watch over us and that you're working all things together for good because you loved us and so we love you. We just ask, Father, that you bless each and every person here. Send your angels and your spirit to touch them, to protect them, to bless them throughout this week. And we just ask that you take these funds, Father, multiply them for your purpose, and may your name be lifted up and glorified here in the Rapid City Church to the whole surrounding area, Father, that the world may know that you are on the throne and that you love them and sent your son to die for them. We thank you for these things in the name of your son. Amen. Amen. This is um, a special occasion. We're going to dedicate a baby. Um, I'll ask you all to turn to him 526. I think it's 526. As I ask the family to step forward, we will sing stanza number two.
during the time that Jesus was here on earth, many parents wanted to bring their children to him so that he could lay their ha his hands on them and bless them. Unfortunately, the disciples were not very happy and so they blocked the children to come. That's when Jesus said the words in Matthew chapter 19, verse 14. Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven is for such as this. Then in verse 15, we are told he blessed the children. In Jesus' interaction with the children as recorded in these verses, we learn several things. I will just mention four. We learn that Christ needs to bless the children. So we want to thank you for bringing your child to the church to be dedicated to the Lord. We also learn that the Lord wants to bless children because it's in God's plans. Number three, we also learn that all parents are encouraged to bring their children to Jesus and so that they can at early age be taught the ways of the Lord. So we want to encourage all of you who are parents to bring your children to the Lord. We want to encourage you to bring your child to Sabbath school and also learn to teach him at home the ways of the Lord. Number four, we are reminded as a church that those who come to Christ must come to Christ in childlike humility and faith and simplicity. Like the children, we need to implicitly trust the Lord, like the children do their parents. All of us who believe ought to trust God. And faith, my friends, faith is not knowing everything. Faith is not doing everything right. Faith is knowing no matter what happens, our Father will take care of us. That kind of faith in God, even when life around us is terrible and sad, is the kind of faith that we see in children. Because God loves children. And so today we are blessed to uh, dedicate Benjamin to the Lord. And I'll ask you to bow your heads as we pray. Let's pray. Our Father... We are humbled to see a new life brought into your sanctuary to be dedicated. We want to thank this family for taking this step. We want to thank this church and asking that we may be a shield, a fence, a protection as these family members try to bring this child in the ways of the Lord. 
May this child be saved by and by. It's going like a tree that's planted by the riverside, whose roots will grow deep and branches grow wide to take in all for the sake of the Lord. And so we pray for the family and ask a blessing on them. Keep them strong, keep them faithful, keep them healthy. We ask, Lord, that you would put a hedge around, of the, around them. Protect them from falling into the temptations of this world. We ask that you will keep their eyes focused on Jesus Christ. Until that day when he calls all the saints home. And so when the saints go marching home, may this family and all of us be able to march in the kingdom by its doors. Bless us to this end now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll ask uh, the children class teacher to come and present the family with their certificates. I want to use this opportunity to thank the church for supporting us all this while we've been here and continue to support us even as we train this child. May the Lord bless all of us in Jesus' name. How many of you recognize the music? What that mean? It means if you're shorter than about here, come on up. It's time for children's story. I say this every time I'm up here. I look out and I see three kids. It's time that music starts, they grow, and they just pop out, and we get a whole handful of them here. Praise God. So as my wife already mentioned, we are doing, we studied very hard. Now I can see the other half of the room. We, the Pathfinders worked very hard studying the book of John. And John has a lot of chapters, and so instead of having all of the kids learn all of the chapters, we broke it up into pieces in different sections, John 1 through 6, 7 through 9, something along those lines. And so today, for the children's story, we're going to do a section of one of those passages that the kids had to do. So we're going to get four different vignettes today, one for children's story and three for the sermon, but they all are from different sections of the book of John. And they are literally word for word from the New King James Version. So if you don't think you can hear, feel free, open up your Bible. You can just read along exactly what's happening. So Pathfinders, the kids are waiting semi-patiently. He went out with his disciples over Brook Kidron, where there was a garden which he and his, his disciples entered. And Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. Then Judas, having re received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come up upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom are you seeking? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. 
Now, when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Then he asked them again, Who are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And where, where are we? And Jesus answered, I have already told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled which he spoke of those whom you gave me. I have lost none then. Simon Peter, the, having a sword, drew and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Malchus. So Jesus said to them, said to Peter, Put your sword into the sheath. Shall I not drink from the cup which my father has given me? Then the detachment of troops and the captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him and they led, led him away. He went out with his disciples over Brook Kidron, where there was a garden which he and his, his disciples entered, and Judas, who betrayed him. It was the night that Jesus was betrayed, and the next day he died on the cross. But what happened three days later? He resurrected. And we have, a, we have a God who sent his son, and his son is now sitting right next to him on his own throne. And that's a wonderful thing. And he's watching over every one of us, and he's getting us ready, and he's getting houses ready so that we can go spend eternity with him. Isn't that a special treat that God, that God did for us? Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for sending your son for the things that happened to him, that you helped him and held him up through all of those things, through the temptations, through the, the betrayal, through the trial, the time on the cross. And we thank you, Father, that you woke him up on the third day, that we have a hope of eternity. We thank you in the name of your son. Amen. Okay, get your baskets. Offering to help the worthy students at our school. It's uh, time for prayer. Before we pray, I do want to recognize a few people in our congregation today. Um... Nelson and Savannah, correct? Okay. That's uh, brother and sister-in-law to Malinda. You're welcome to worship with us today. We're glad you're here. In the back, um, Brenda, you're visiting from Hermosa? Good. We're glad you're visiting with us today. And uh, we pray that our Pathfinder program will be a blessing. Brother Wayne, we're glad you're visiting with us today. And uh, we pray that our fellowship would be a blessing. I didn't... The two gentlemen behind you, Shelley. Tell me your name again. Justin. Huh? Bradley. Bradley. Thank you. We, we're glad you're visiting. You're visiting with us? Okay. We're glad you're visiting with us. And if you're looking for a home church, this is a warm church. Please stay with us. Um... Anyone else visiting with us today?
Hello, tell us your name. Rene. Please, if you're looking for a home church, this is a warm church right here. You'll be welcome. You're welcome. Um, we have uh, prayer requests in our bulletin. Uh, I'll kindly ask you to look at them. Uh, people to remember in prayer. Um, I do want to mention that uh, Charles' wife, Elaine, is not here with us. She is not feeling too well. She's uh, in, um, in uh, Arrowhead. I think that's the name of uh, the nursing home. And also, I would like to mention that um, Karen, Karen's mother, Mary, is also in um, Fountain Springs, I think it is. She's not uh, feeling too well. Uh, we will mention those in our prayer. Let's bow our heads together as we pray. Our Father, we come to you today because we are needy. We have several names in our prayer list. There are some who are sick and homebound. There are some that are struggling with non or private sins. There are some that are struggling financially. There are many of our people who are not here today to worship. And so we want to take this time to bring them before you and ask in a special way that you would reach out to them and touch them. We ask that you will continue to reveal yourself as a God who cares. And may your love be manifested in our lives so that we can represent you right. We want to pray for our young ones as they take charge of the program today. We ask that their ministry may be impactful to those of us who are participating in the worship. We continue to ask a blessing on our church. We thank you for loving us because we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll now have a special song. The song today is Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Scripture today will be found in John chapter 1, verse 1 through 4. In the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. He was the begin 
he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made what that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So again, we're going to be doing three little vignettes. The chapter 4, 9, no, 4, I think it's 4, 9, and 11, I think are the three that are left. So, uh, Pathfinders? Okay. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee, but he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away to the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For the Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it was who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thir thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water I shall give them will never thirst, but the water that I shall give them will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go, call for your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you have now is not your husband, and that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. <laughs> Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. The Father is seeking such it, to worship him, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. At this point, his disciples came, and they marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no one said, what do you seek, or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? In the meantime, his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat which you do not know. 
Therefore, the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me to finish his work. Do not say there are still four months to come. And then harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these sayings, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. So when he went and washed and came back seen, therefore the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is this not he who sat and begged? Some said. Oh, this is he. Others said. Mm, he's like him. He said. I am he. Therefore, Therefore they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. So I went and washed, and I received sight. Then they said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought him to formerly was blind to the Pharisees. Now it was Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also said to him again how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Therefore some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a d division among them. They said to the blind man again, What do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight. Until they called his the parents of him who had received his sight and they asked him saying is this your is this son who say who you say was born blind how then does he see, now see his parents answered them and said we we know that this is our son and that he was born blind but by what means he now sees we do not know or who opened his eyes we do not know he is of age ask him he will speak for himself his parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, Give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. Then they said to him again, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He in, Then he, they said to him again, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He in, in, concealing, in, in, in concealing answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And then they re re reviled him and said, You are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. We know that God spoke to Moses as 
for this fellow we do not know him know where he is from the man answered and said to them why this is a marvelous thing that you do not know where he's from yet he has opened my eyes now we know that God does not hear sinners but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will he hears him since the world began it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind if this man were not a prophet from God he could do nothing they answered and said to him, You were completely born in sins, and are you teaching us? And they cast him out. It, Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of the world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus speaks, but I... But I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, if he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he, that he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the woman around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, and whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is, who is to come into the world. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They, Mary and Martha, said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. <laughs> then the Jews said, See, now he loved him. And some of them said, Could this not? Could this man who opened the eyes of a blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, oh. came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, "Take away the stone." Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, "Lord, by this time there's a stench, for he has been dead for four days." Jesus said to her. Did I not say that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they might believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! And he who had died came out, bound hand and foot with grave cloths, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Please stand for a closing song, hymn number 190, Jesus Loves Me. No. Bow your heads with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for this service. Please be with us all the rest of the day. Amen.